I want to start out with poet's talk. I love how the poet flips out his flip phone while reading a piece that disparages his students who keep their faces affixed to smarter phones. Kudos to that poet who bemoans the state of human interaction, disuse of eye contact when talking. I'd have stuck to my flip phone, but it stopped ringing. Friends and family balk at talk. I spend silent days writing verse on a computer screen, and quiet nights conversing through text on a phone screen with friends and family who've lost their voices. Um, art on plein air. No need to enter museums or galleries to experience Buenos Aires art and politics. Just wander the streets of the Palermo Barrio where mothers and sisters whose sons and brothers went missing send messages through vibrant murals. Or read the walls flanking Shishi restaurant to Gui to learn how fiercely Argentines revere the Islas Malvinas. No need for rich patrons to be an Argentine artist. Make city walls and private homes your canvas. Theater designer Jazz commemorates two murdered boys with the charcoal of raging bulls. Pom Pom channels fun with her pink and blue cats and a big banged little girl in high heel boots. A Cuban artist splashes a wall with the expressive eyes of his father-in-law whose sole dream was to have his ashes return to Buenos Aires. Um, Venice reveries. The bereft nightlife uplifts. We walk beside shadows in search of chiquetti, something authentic to prolong the hush. I forego tourism in calves liver, buy a mask and hide in Burano, island of lace, seafood, and vibrant colors. Like Hemingway, I retreat to Torcello, write about a river and trees, make a date with my muse to meet at Ponte del Diavolo. Um, and now I'm gonna read the title poem from Views from the Driveway. And, uh, here it goes. A small stretch of space afforded a window on the world, the promise of escape from harmful clutches that lurked inside. Freedom is a bicycle in red or turquoise or deep purple. <coughs> Grasping banana-shaped handlebars, one circled toward independence, mastered the initial phases of lovemaking with neighbors, friends, passers-by. On steamy, sultry days, the surface shot off a pungent perfume, mixing with the scent of sun on young skin and nubile grass clippings. Summer in the suburbs had arrived. Butterfly days called for loose plans and clandestine trips to the private duck pond to roll down grassy hills and puff on stolen cigarettes. Time answered most important questions, and in the orb of my mind, Breezeways are still in vogue. Families seek shade beneath Kelly green awnings. Girls dare to draw the sun with aluminum foil. We still marvel at the sight of fireflies come dusk. And um, from the same book, uh, Twilight Passeggiata. Past row homes inhabited from by families from a dying Italian village. They trudge by immaculate porches adorned with huge pots of crimson geraniums, making their evening cigarette run in the same uniform, worn army jackets stamped with the pervasive peace sign, scruffy jeans, and black motorcycle boots. They hid behind long unkempt hair and goatees in silence. The Paisani across the way whispered about the problem. A few tried to talk them straight, handed them juicy tomatoes and peaches that sprung up in minuscule backyards, where beady green wine grapes also flourished. These simple folk needed so little to be happy. 
Music of the times was sweet, raw, hopeful, hopeless. War in a far off land of jungles lingered on. A family friend grieved for a soldier's son. But what scared the neighborhood kids was the look of this tribe who passed each night until one by one they no longer lumbered on. And um, back to my latest book, um, Equine Magic. My favorite pet slept outdoors. He relished freedom, possessed limitless power, required unbridled space to roam, run, roll over, fling up his heels, prances of always hearing music. His ears, nose, and loins spoke to me. Speedy had wings that he lent me for our Sunday rides where I could escape the mundane as we became one with the wind. Um, orange is the new black. I'm tossing black from my world. Black clothes, black cars, black moods, banishing dread and gloom. Black was cool at 16 and slimming at 30. <laughs> now I'm occupying orange-hued vibes, loosening the shackles to dark tones. I'm deporting colorless lingerie and sex. When I sleep, instead of jumping into black pu puddles, I'm going to emerge from tangerine dreams, glowing. We'll keep the color theme going. Um, this is Rio the way I see it. Hot pink is the color of Brazil, but green is the color of Rio, a tropical urban jungle pulsing with life. Yellow is for flickering lights from the favelas that hug lush mountains, offering prime city views, where poverty, drugs, and samba mingle and young children bounce on a trampoline in Cantagallo, immune to foreign visitors' downcast glances. Blue is for swank homes in artsy Santa Teresa district, echoing France's Malmarche, but where few workers speak other languages, preferring to communicate in smiles and laughter. White is for Cristo Redentor, with arms outstretched and oversized heart, who protects cariocas alongside city patron Sao Sebastião. Black is the color of rosary beads that dangle from taxi mirrors, promising safety on and off the roads, the only jewelry we wear in this dangerously fun town. <laughs> Retro Rider. Ducati's gone vintage and resurrected the Scrambler. Steve McQueen's bike of choice as a war prisoner in the Great Escape. I once rode on the back of a Harley. Grad school at 30 had its perks. Fearless and helmetless, I clutched the seat, not my odd Italian-American date, as we whirred past cacti flanking the Phoenix Highway. 10 years later, Ducati headquarters in Bologna as a reporter for advertising age. I hoped for a test ride, but had to settle for a photo. Me and Ducati, living in the land of Tortellini, where my taste now ran to fire engine red motorcycles, whose drivers were devastatingly handsome and spoke Italian. <laughs> you got me covered, dude. And I'm going to end with um, channeling the wind. <laughs> the chiasso of the day softens once I hear the wind. Trees sashay to its many faces. Leaves chatter, reveal secrets. My muses, tragedy and heartbreak, having moved on, it's time to summon new gods. Fall arrives in Philadelphia. Mother nature takes her throne. As currents caress me, I wrap my mind around memories. In New York City, as I walk along Highline Park, 
I reach for parades of clouds. Nunch by the wind, I compose lines. On lunch breaks near Penn Station, a blustery force calls out. I chase it and empty my head of less so that I can make room for the stories. Free at last on Saturdays, I traipse down 10th Avenue to Chelsea Market. Moving too fast to text or talk, verses take root. An indigo sky looms as I head to the gym on the pier. Meeting face to face with the wind, I make a pact to share the tales, no longer keep them tucked in my soul to savor alone. <laughs>